Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I am not, not going to present our regional report, a report, uh, uh, but but I'm going to uh, use it to introduce the topic of the of the session. Our report uh, says that uh, Latin America and the Caribbean is a region trapped in a double trap of high inequality and low growth, and it uh, sustains that these two are not independent phenomena. It takes a careful look at factors behind high inequality and uh, low productivity that if we could address properly uh, from a, a policy response could probably move the region in, a, in the desired direction on both, on both fronts. So the report takes a look at concentration of power, at violence and at uh, social protection systems that do not work well as such factors that could be explaining both how unequal uh, we are and the way in which our productivity and economies do not grow, uh, do not grow well. The report also looks at, at, per, uh, at perceptions and it of course recognizes that this trap falls in a different shape depending on the governance uh, in, in different places. Today I am going to speak very briefly, give you an overview of what chapter four of this report contains. This is the, the chapter that um, looks at violence as a common factor of both high inequality and low growth. We know uh, that uh, violence and inequality have both been declining over time in the world. And this is also true when we look at Latin America and the Caribbean. It's not that we have not made progress. However, Latin America and the Caribbean remains one of the most unequal regions of the world and remains the most violent in the world. It, it houses 34% of the population, sorry, 9% of the population, and 34% uh, of the homicides worldwide. There is, of course, heterogeneity across subregions within uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. We are looking here at homicide rates, and we see that Central America and South America uh, are in worse conditions than, than the Caribbean when we look at uh, homicide rates. But this uh, type of variance in, ter in terms of the intensity of violence holds on also when we look within, like in, uh, in each subregion, within, within subregion, there are countries that uh, have twice, three times, or even 13 times the violence of, of, uh, of other countries in the same, in the same subregion. This, this is another way to see how much variation there is uh, when we look at, at homicide rates in Latin America. And this is, of course, not the only measure of violence that, that uh, we would want to have, but it's the one that is uh, more homogeneously found. And that's one thing that uh, we will be making an, an emphasis on, like the difficulty to find good uh, uh, measures, good uh, uh, registries of all the violence and crime. In the report, we look basically at homicide rates and, and victimization rates. We know that Latin American countries have higher levels of violence than uh, countries with similar levels of inequality. And they also have higher victimization rates than countries with similar levels of inequality. People in Latin America, rep one in each uh, in every 10 report to have uh, to having been victim of a crime in the last 12 months in the region. And of course, violence not only varies in terms of, in, uh, of its intensity, but also in terms of type. Ana Arjona wrote a, a background paper uh, for this report that she will like, um, talk about in a second. And uh, she uh, proposes to a typification of, uh, of violence in these three categories. Criminal violence, that arising from organized crime. Political violence, that has, uh, which has a relationship to uh, groups or violence related to political agendas. And social and domestic violence, that, uh, the interpersonal or, or um, collective violence between groups of people or even within households. And uh, when we look at Latin America and the Caribbean, the, the violence varies not only in intensity, but in the type of violence that prevails in each country. In Colombia, we have a, a scary mix of the first two uh, 
that, that matter importantly. One thing that we know is that mo most homicides come from criminal violence and organized crime in the region. Even before the report, there is quantita quantitative evidence of the relationship between inequality and uh, violence and inequality. The report offers new, uh, new evidence, looking at different samples, and we find uh, there is a paper by Ernesto Shadrosky that helped, uh, helped us uh, get this new, this new evidence. And uh, what is probably most interesting is that the relationship between inequality and violence is very robust. And he, uh, the paper sustains that like, it can be like, a, ca a causal relationship, uh, while the relationship between poverty and inequality is never as robust. So it's the more unequal societies that become uh, more violent, not necessarily the poorest ones. Violence, when, when it occurs in context of high inequality, it contributes to amplifying and perpetuating inequality. And this occurs because it uh, uh, falls in a disproportionate way among uh, groups that are already in conditions of disadvantage, like the poor, LGBT plus groups, women, and ethnic minorities. They are usually overrepresented among, among the victims. And when these uh, disadvantaged populations are victimized, the gaps in uh, development outcomes widen. We're talking about rights, education, income, uh, uh, health, and political participation. And some forms of violence also affect societies through their impact on local governance. Just because we have the Secretary for Women here, I'm going to show some of the regional statistics. Intim intimate partner violence against women in the region is widespread. Tw one, in, one in every four women has uh, uh, been physically or sexually ab abused by any partner. And of course there is variance across, uh, wide variance across countries. In most countries, more than one woman in ten has been sexually or physically abused by her most recent partners, and this go as high as a 59% in Bolivia. And within Latin America, Central America is the subregion with the highest levels of, of femicide. We're talking about of 6.3 and 7.1 uh, femicide uh, w women uh, killed per hundred inhabitants in Salvador and Honduras. We, um, the report makes a case of a circular relationship between inequality, inequality and violence. violence uh, causes inequality, but also uh, inequality uh, causes violence. We are saying that we also should be looking at how uh, violence affects economic growth. The, there are like several channels that we can think about. The first one is how violence um, distorts investment, distorts uh, both public and private investment. Uncertainty about property rights means that investments sometimes don't, don't get done or uh, are reshaped and um, resources assigned to uh, suboptimal, suboptimal investments or sectors. And uh, when you have high levels of violence, governments have to devote huge uh, amounts of national budgets to security issues instead of spending them in development, in education, health, infrastructure. Violence also weakens local state capacity and makes it more vulnerable to corruption and to rent-seeking behaviors. Victimization destroys human capital. People who are victims of violence not only have like a, their, personal, uh, their personal loss, but uh, they also uh, usually have mental health issues that prevent them from learning and getting an education and later engaging properly in, in the labor markets. There is of course this like personal side uh, that, that is uh, horrible, but it, it also adds up to lower productivity when you add up uh, in a society a lot of people who have been victimized. And some forms of violence also destroy physical capital and natural capital. 
So, what the report is saying is that eradicating violence should be an active policy. Uh, it requires active policy interventions for both decreasing inequality and increasing economic growth and productivity. The report cannot give specific recommendations of like policy recommendations, but we try to give some like propose some lines of, of action, hoping that um, it will open up conversations at the local level in the different countries and in spaces like this one. And this is one of the reasons why we're presenting here, it here today. Very quickly, because this is my last slide. Uh, we're, the, the report is suggesting that we need to look at judiciary systems. And as, like, this, is, this matters for corruption and it matters for violence. As long as we don't have judiciary uh, systems that work, it's going to be impossible to eradicate violence. As UNDP, we cannot say it directly, but uh, we are saying that our countries need to start a dialogue about decriminalization and legalization of uh, illicit uh, trade. Because this is, as, as I said before, the l largest source of violence in the, in the Latin American continent. Of course, policies that uh, enforce zero tolerance against discrimination are, are, uh, uh, need to be like in the, in the radar. To protect women, we need to women em empowerment. And for that reason, in this chapter specifically, we're talking about uh, care issues and the, the need to be like to ha have a provision of care services that will uh, allow women to par participate more in the labor market and and have a, an independent like an, their economic independence. Of course, mental health care for for victims of violence is something that is not often thought. I know Andres Moya. A uh, professor from Universidad de Los Andes has worked a lot on it, and uh, this is a key, a key uh, policy uh, uh, area that needs to be that needs to be put at the center at the center of, uh, of priorities. And, and and last but not least, the report makes a, a very like a strong uh, call for more and better data. Because in order to design good policy, we need to be able to really know what is going on. And violence is very frequently misreported. A very um, like particular case ar arises when you look, for instance, at, at violence against LGBT plus uh, groups when we were trying to collect information for the sex of the report. The, the information that exists out there is really from NGOs or from, or from root organizations. And nothing really uh, systematically and organizedly collected. So this is a big issue uh, looking forward, and that's where I will stop. <laughs>